For USCFootball.com, I'm Jack Smith alongside Chris Trevino for instant analysis from USC's Wednesday evening practice. Chris, what were your general thoughts from not a very hot practice day? I know you like to mention it's hot. Today, kind of a cooler day. Kind of a cooler day. The big notice that I had was that I was back. That was first of all. I'm just kidding. But it wasn't a very eventful practice. Obviously, the one I did not attend yesterday was more eventful. You know, Obviously, Gary Bryant on the scout team, a lot more news going on that day. Lincoln Riley spoke, but very calm practice. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. Didn't get to see any of the scout offense work against the defense. So not a lot of notes there, but it felt like the calm before the storm. Jack, obviously, this is a huge road game between two undefeated teams in the Pac-12 on the Pac-12 network, so no one will see it. But it's going to be an exciting one, an eventful one, and a rocking atmosphere, I feel like, in Corvallis. So calm before the storm. We heard the uh, the turnover, not the turnover, the third down uh, chainsaw going on at the end of practice. So they're preparing for that loud noise, uh, absolutely. Well, it is only going to be a 50% stadium, so I don't know how rocking it could be. But we didn't get to talk to Lincoln Riley today because he was yesterday. You missed that. But Alex Grinch did talk today, one of the players he was asked about. And one of the players I feel like isn't getting enough recognition because there's a lot of new going on. And he's a player that was from the previous regime. But Tuli Tuli Pelotu might be the best player on defense so far for the Trojans. And Alex Grinch talked a lot about him. What did you gather from what Grinch said about Tuli? Look, he's not undervalued in my eyes, Jack. I put all my stock into Tuli Tui Pelotu going to the season, but he has been a beast after, you know, obviously having a little bit of a slow start on his birthday in that Rice game, but obviously Alex Grinch raves about Tuli any chance he can he can get, but Tuli's coming off another monster game, three sacks on the season, second in the Pac-12, I believe six tackles for a loss, that is also second in the Pac-12, just off to a great start, and, you know, he talked about how he has the immense talent, but also an incredible worker. And, you know, to have a player that has both of those things, that's just a blessing for a defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, whatever position they play, that's just a huge benefit uh, for a team. And Thule being a guy who was committed from day one, bought into what Alex Grinch and his defense was doing, bought into what Lincoln Riley and this program was doing. So to have a guy like that with the talent and the hard work and the early buy-in right away, I mean, that just sets a standard for the rest of the players in that, in that room. Yeah, I mean, he mentioned, like, he's a hard worker. He also has the talent. He said he likes to think that the hard work comes first and any player can work to get the talent that Thule has. But it, it was kind of funny. Another thing he mentioned that he has both of is the ability to play inside and play outside, something Trojan fans have noticed almost since day one with Thule. But that versatility also brings along the challenge of deciding where to play him. Grinch was asked about that today. What were your thoughts on his answer? Yeah, I mean, to go a little chess analogy, he's a queen. He can go anywhere. You can do so many things with him. That's the versatility that he brings. And you always need a couple of queens to play play on a, a, an offense or a defense, guys that are just matchup issues, and you can put them anywhere. And Thule is that guy. He can move inside when USC is getting a little bit gashed on the interior because they aren't as big as a traditional team. So you want to kick him inside, keep him on the outside. And if you kept him on the outside exclusively, he's probably could be your best pass rusher. But sometimes you need him in there and use his incredible strength and size, you know, at six foot four, five, you know, push in two, uh, 300 pounds to stuff up the middle with his strength. So he can do it all. He's a jack of all trades kind of guy with the defensive line. And that's kind of what this offense, uh, sorry, excuse me, this defense calls for is that versatility, that scheme, moving guys around. And Thule's a perfect fit for that. Uh, I know fans would love to see him more on the outside just because he's just so relentless off the edge. And he had some big sacks against Fresno State, you know, just barreling into the guy, bear hugging him with his arm. So USC fans are hoping they get a little more of that on uh, Oregon State's quarterback and kind of re wreaking havoc uh, back there again for number 49. Well, you heard it here first. Tui Tui Pelotu is a queen, according to Chris Trevino. Uh, but talking about Oregon State's quarterback, Chance Nolan is a guy who had a really good game against USC last year. He's kind of been the topic of conversation as USC heads to Corvallis this Saturday. What are your thoughts about the Oregon State QB? You know, I was a big fan of Ch uh, Chance Nolan last year, and I think he's a guy who was, you know, no one really expected him to, to perform that well, and he came in, stepped in that role, and kind of took it and held on to it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Keaton Slovis and how he kind of took that role for himself, and now he's kind of a top quarterback in the Pac-12. I believe he is the number one rated or uh, graded uh, quarterback in the Pac-12. That's over uh, Michael Penix, over at Washington, and Caleb Williams at USC. So. Chance Nolan off to a very good start, you know, kind of high in there in the passing, completions, uh, touchdowns, and he's a player, you know, and we talked to some of the defensive backs about this, Anthony Beavers and Sierra Wright. We asked them, you know, what makes Chance Nolan so special or, or a good, good, good quarterback, and Sierra was talking about how Chance puts the ball in only the position where the 
where the receiver can make the play on it. And obviously that's a hugely valuable skill as a quarterback, keeping it out of range of defenders. So Sierra's like, we have to be on our P's and Q's. We have to be in the right position to make the play because we know Chance is going to put it in the right position for his wide receiver to make the play. So those are the kind of things you have to look for. You know, Nolan can scramble a little bit, but he's more so of a passer. But, you know, he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. He, he, he had a not a huge game against USC, but he was 15 and 19. They were running it down USC's throats last year. This is a game where you're going to want to put the ball in his hands and make him beat you that way and not give him the opportunity to run with the clock. He is a talented quarterback, but you got to trust in USC's defensive, defensive backs. That's secondary. Get to, trust them to get to him and, you know, create some more turnovers. Yeah, I mean, we've been here on two straight Wednesdays talking about different quarterbacks. Started with Tanner McKee, and then it was Jay Kaner. Unfortunately, Hainer goes down to injury, but those are two quarterbacks that USC's made look kind of pedestrian through the first two games, and there were two quarterbacks that we were touting as potential draft prospects, guys that can really turn around a game in college football. We'll see if Chance Nolan is going to be the next in line. He will be missing arguably his top weapon. Uh, do you think that he'll be able to bounce back from Musgrave, the tight end, being out? Like, What, what is your gauge on that? Yeah, obviously Mus- losing Musgrave is a, is, a, is a big thing for them. He's their leading receiver through their first two games, had that hip injury. He is out for this weekend. And, you know, he's six foot six, huge target. Uh, USC has struggled to cover, you know, kind of those big bodied wide rec- or receivers, pass catchers, however you want to call them. But, you know, Anthony Beavers was asked about that, or I believe it was Sarah Wright actually, was asked, you know, does Luke Musgrave being out change anything? He's like, nope, we're just going to play our game. Obviously, that's what they're going to say. They're, they're not going to really. Uh, change anything about their defense one guy doesn't really change it like that but you know they do still have some weapons you know Treshawn Harrison is a, a big time player was a big time recruit out of high school Anthony Gould uh, five foot eight small guy smaller than me quick shifty guy had an 80 yard punt return for a score so they got some playmakers and you know I'm sure they have a big tight end waiting over there in Oregon State to kind of feel the role of Musgrave uh, out there on the field. So I think it's going to be, it does hurt uh, Nolan's perspective, you know, not having that big weapon, but they still got weapons aplenty to throw to. Yeah, we'll go from one quarterback to another. We got to talk to Caleb Williams after practice today against Fresno State. It wasn't bad, definitely not bad, but it was probably his worst performance as a USC quarterback so far. He had 10 incompletions in the first half, uh, more incompletions against Fresno State than the first two games combined. He was asked about that, dealing with the the slight bit of adversity he's had to deal deal with this season because he's been so good for USC. What did you think about his answers when he was asked about struggling in this game? Well, first to his answer about having 10 complete incompletions, he was like, I did? I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so that tells us, like, you know, he's not really paying attention to that, as he shouldn't. You shouldn't really be, you know, studying your stat book or like that, you know, especially as a guy who's being, you know, it's easy to do that if you're being touted as a Heisman contender, like, oh, I got to get my stats, got to get my stats. But you can just tell that doesn't really matter to him. It matters to him is getting the ball to his playmakers, putting points on this offense, leading this offense, being a leader. Those are the things that are important to him. So that's very, uh, it's nice to see. That's something you can definitely tell that comes off in the interview. But, you know, he was talking about how he feels like he's more accurate this year. He's more confident. And I, I'm expecting, you know, to him to take another step forward in this game. This is going to be a big test for him, just being in a loud environment on the road. Let's face it, Corvallis is going to be a lot more hostile than Stanford Stadium was with probably 70%, 60% USC fans. So this is going to be his first true road test as a Trojan, you know, and I expect him to kind of stand up and, and take control of that. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, another thing that he was asked about uh, was the fact that something we've talked about, they were able to move the ball in four plays and also 15 plays. What did you think about what he had to say? You know, I think that there was a great... Uh, diversity in terms of you know being able to do that he talks about he talked about how you know taking the ball and keeping it away from the defense not having to look for the big play all the time that big post route that's not something he wants to do all the time he knows that to win games especially close games you need to be able to take the ball drain the clock kill the opposing side in terms of bleeding them to death with that clock and that's something that USC showcased in that first opening drive you know 12 plays 12 plays 15 play scoring drives you hope to see more of that moving into Corvallis. Don't give the, the fans something to cheer about on offense. Keep the ball away from them. And I know it's a little bit gruesome with my descriptions there of killing the other side, but that's what you got to do in football. You know, kind of bleed the clock out, drain the clock out, and keep the ball away from the other side. You know what else is gruesome? There's always a helicopter or a truck or, or a, a big car that's trying to distract it, you, but doing a great job handling that. Uh, I got to ask Caleb about Oregon State's defensive front because they'll play some of the most games, the most stunts that USC will see throughout the entire season. What did you think about his answer to the question about how he has to handle that? Yeah, pretty pretty simple uh, answer there. It's like 
Don't get tripped up. Don't overthink it. Make sure you give the uh, the offensive line enough time to adjust their 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 run game, their run fits, or whatever. Because if you're out of sync with whatever Oregon State is showing, it's not going to work. And there's going to be big plays, and there's going to be big plays for the defense. So it's it's all about I would say slowing it down a little bit, just taking the time to make his calls, make his checks, make sure everyone is in where they're supposed to be when something is tweaked on the other side of the ball. You can't go fast all the time. You want to go fast, but going too fast could also be detrimental to the offense. Just make sure everyone's in the right position, right spot. It's going to be loud, so he's going to have to be vocal. You know, get everyone in position, give them a little bit of time to, to correct themselves if, you know, Oregon State showing one thing and then goes to something else. Yeah, I think another fun nugget from his, his interview is he answered a question and then there was a little break and he goes, oh, and I trust my, I trust our defense. So I think, you know, Caleb Williams has trust in the defense. Maybe Trojan fans can have a little bit more trust in the defense as well. You're not going to be here for tomorrow's show, Tunnel Vision. It's going to be a plug. It's going to be me, Shotgun, and RJ doing the preview show for the weekend. So I want to get your prediction. USC heading down to Corvallis. You'll be there. I want to hear your prediction for the game. I think spread six and a half. What are you going with? Well, for a little sneak peek, we do make our staff predictions every week. I'm picking USC to cover, so I'm I'm picking them to win by more than a touchdown. I think USC is going to, you know, Caleb Williams said he trusts the defense. I do trust the defense as well to maybe get some turnovers, make some stops, but I think Oregon State is going to put up the most points that USC has allowed this season. So I'm thinking, you know, about 45 to 32. That's what I'm feeling, Jack. I think that's the score for me, and I'm going to stick with it. Well, in that case, USC would have their fourth straight game scoring over 40 points. So another big day from the offense. Any key players, you know, a little sneak peek into your bold predictions? Maybe ones that have to get left off the top five? Putting me on the spot here. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit, you know, I didn't do great this past weekend. I went 0 for 5, I believe. But, you know, I, I'm going to try to change that. Maybe something for special teams. You know, these two teams are not great at kickoff coverage. They're the bottom two, both of them, in uh, opponent kickoff returns with 25 and 28 yards per return. So maybe we'll see, uh, you know, maybe a prediction about something big play happening on special teams. You know, just a little, just a little sneak peek. Well, fun insight from Chris Trevino. This has been Instant Analysis after USC's Wednesday practice. The Trojans heading down to Corvallis this Saturday. We'll be live tunnel vision tomorrow night. There's also going to be a ton of interviews and highlights up on the page from practice. For Jack Smith, Chris Trevino, this has been Instant Analysis. Check out uscfootball.com for more.